Are there any other votes? Announce the results. Ayes 110, noes 0. The bill is passed. Assembly 10,599, Rules Report 532, Committee on Rules, an act to authorize the village of Montgomery in the County of Orange to discontinue use of certain parkland. On a motion by Ms. Tinney, the Senate bill is before the House. The Senate bill is advanced. Home rule message is at the desk. Read the last section. This act shall take effect immediately. Clerk will record the vote. Ms. Smiley-Otakis to explain her vote. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I just want to take a moment to commend the sponsor. Um, you know, Sen uh, Claudia Tenney and I came in together in uh, 2011. We were the only two women in the Republican uh, class that year, and we became very good friends uh, very quickly. Claudia uh, and I have traveled around the state together. Uh, she took me to some of the rural parts, being the city girl, uh, to see a little bit of what it's like in upstate life. We milked a cow, I drove a pickup truck, I shot a, I shot a shotgun. Um, and so we really had a rifle, not a shotgun, that shows you how much I know. Um, but she really gave me a taste of what upstate New York is about, and I think that's always important as a New York City member to do that. But I want to just commend her for her uh, principled approach in being here and fighting for what she believes is right, uh, being a leader in the reform movement, and um, being one of the members who really stuck to her principles and always fought for better government. And I will say, um, I will miss her. Um, I wish to visit her in Washington, D.C. I know she's going to do very well in her election, and we should all be proud of her. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Murray to explain his vote. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd just like to add my name to the uh, list of, of those that would like to uh, wish Congresswoman, I mean, uh, Assemblywoman Tenney, the best of luck in her endeavors and just to say it's been a pleasure. In fact, I specifically came back just to serve two more years with her before she would leave. So I uh, just wanted to wish her the best of luck and say it's been a pleasure working beside you uh, for these years. Mr. Ra to explain his vote. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Just uh, want to wish my colleague and classmate uh, well. I know many in the majority are going to be upset because there's going to be one less no vote on a lot of your bills. Um, but uh, I want to wish her well. Uh, I know she'll do good things. And she, I think she may become the uh, first person ever to go to Congress and get a smaller district than her assembly district. So, uh, so uh, best to our, our colleague. I cast my vote in the affirmative. Thank you, sir. Mr. Cahill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to join my colleagues in wishing our colleague well in her future endeavors. It is utterly appropriate that uh, this is the bill we're recognizing Claudia on since, as with most of the cases, I am a no vote on a Tinney bill, <laughs> just as she has been a no vote on virtually every Cahill bill. Uh, uh, Claudia follows a long tradition of disagreeable people. She succeeded Dave Townsend in that seat, <clears throat> who I also disagreed with almost diametrically in every single possible instance. I, I, will, I will say, however, that Claudia and I share representation in Ulster County, and she got one of the towns that uh, was very near and dear to me, the town of Wawarsing, the village of Ellenville. And um, I know her constituents there um, had to get to know her from afar, but she made every effort to be in that town as frequently as possible. And as a result of her representation, they don't miss me at all. So, uh, Claudia, good luck in your future endeavors. Mr. McLaughlin. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to just join in, uh, in welcome, uh, wishing our colleague Claudia well. And uh, just to say that her no votes on Mr. Cahill's votes are, bills kind of show the, the judgment that she will bring to the U.S. Congress, I think. But uh, 
Uh, she is off and running to bigger and better things. We've been in this row uh, now for six years, sometimes called the row of no or the red light district over here. But, uh, uh, <laughs> but we are going to miss her, and uh, it's been a pleasure sharing this row with her. Uh, we've had a lot of great talks and a lot of great times, and we will miss you and wish you the best. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Tatone. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. As a majority member, as a liberal Democrat, I too want to uh, wish uh, uh, Ms. Tenney uh, well. Um, so, which one of you is Tenney? <laughs> All the best, Claudia. You will be missed. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Tatone. Mr. Butler. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I just wanted to thank Mr. Cahill for giving uh, Claudia some some great uh, clips for her commercials, for her uh, <laughs> run for the, uh, because anything that she's for and he's against, that will work very well up in our part of the world. But uh, Claudia is a, a longtime friend and neighbor uh, in her district, and we've talked about the issues many times. And, uh, we'll miss her here, but I know she'll go on to bigger and better things. So, Claudia, all the best to you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Mr. John. Uh, yes, Mr. Speaker, uh, I want to congratulate Claudia in advance. I know she'll be down in Washington in the majority party. So uh, I just wanted to let her know we have an agreement for any future Democrats in this body that wind up in Washington, Claudia will co-sponsor your legislation to get it to the floor for a vote. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Mr. Lento. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I just wanted to say that uh, as the chair of the codes committee, uh, in a longstanding tradition from her county, her home county, she has followed in the footsteps of David Townsend as Mr. Cahill suggested. But I wanted her to know that we've appreciated all of her no votes on the codes committee, <laughs> as well as uh, the fact that if you ever need a New York City Democrat to endorse you in your congressional election, I know that will help you, so you can count on me. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Ms. we really- Thank you, sir. Mr. Goodell. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Um, last summer, I had the honor of being visited by two of our members. Uh, Nicole Maliotakis and Claudia Tenney. They made the trip all the way to almost Cleveland to visit me. And uh, we met uh, with one of our local reporters and they gave their impression. And what was astounding is that they got three color pictures on the front page of our newspaper and two more pictures in the text. It's taken me six years to get that many, <laughs> and I had to pay for them with advertising dollars. Uh, obviously, uh, a great impression. The rest of you are all invited. Uh, it's just a slight drive, you know, eight, to eight or nine hours from New York, and you'll be there, and you're all welcome to come. But uh, Claudia, you've done a great job here in the assembly. Uh, you certainly have stood up for your principles. Uh, I've always listened to your comments, and. Uh, Look forward to your great success in Congress. Thank you, sir. And Ms. Tinney to close. Thank you. I don't want to take up any more time because I know everybody wants to go home, but I'm, I greatly appreciate the comments from all of you. Uh, it's been an honor serving here for six years, almost. And uh, all of you are really just wonderful people. I've, I've been so impressed with people on both sides of the aisle. And you, when we go home, everyone says, isn't everybody fighting? Isn't everybody terrible? But the truth is, you know, I've made so many good friends, and there are so many good people on both sides here, and it's really an honor to serve with you, to talk about the ideas, and, and I greatly appreciate all the comments from, from everyone. But uh, it, it really has been a learning experience, and I, I think that, uh, you know, Matt is, of course, staring me down like he does every time I speak on the floor, even though he doesn't know who I am. <laughs> but uh, it's really been a, a great experience, and uh, I really appreciate it, again, the comments. And uh, I hope that we, uh, we move on into uh, another exciting year next year and you all carry on the torch. And uh, we did make some changes in New York that, that were much needed in the past few years and you've all been part of it. And uh, I do want to just say one thing to Mr. Cahill. Thank you very much for voting no on my uh, district in the redistricting bill because you're one of the few. So that's about the one thing we might agree on. 
<laughs> but uh, anyway, I do want to say again, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and to all of you for, for the wonderful work that you do here. And uh, truly, people think that it's a dysfunctional legislature, but we do do a lot of wonderful things together for our, for our constituents. And I greatly appreciate that. And uh, your comments are, you know, from all of you are really humbling, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Tinney, and God bless. Are there any other votes? Announce the results. Ayes 96, noes 13. The bill is passed. Assembly 10611, Rules Report 533, Committee on Rules, an act to amend the penal law. Bill is laid aside. On a motion by Mr. Morelli, the Senate bill is before the House. The Senate bill is advanced. Bill is laid aside. Assembly 10,686, Rules Report 534, Committee on Rules, an act to amend the general municipal law. Read the last section. This act shall take effect January 1st. Clerk will record the vote. Are there any other votes? Announce the results. Ayes 79, noes 25. The bill is passed. Assembly 10,706, Rules Report 535, Committee on Rules, an act to amend the county law. On, on a motion by Ms. Faye, the Senate bill is before the House. The Senate bill is advanced. The bill is laid aside.
Assembly 10,737, Rules Report 536, Committee on Rules, an act approving land transactions. On a motion by Mr. Engelbright, the Senate bill is before the House. The Senate bill is advanced. Read the last section. This act shall take effect immediately. The clerk will record the vote. The vote. Mr. Engelbright to explain his vote. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, this is a matter that uh, includes some additional information I'd like to put into the record. Am um, I uh, on a three minute time frame or do I have more than that? Two minutes. I'll read fast. Read fast. This is from the uh, Office of the Commissioner of the Department of Environmental Conservation. He says, dear uh, Assemblyman Engelbright, uh, to ensure that the legislature can conclude that the provision of the Marion River carry provides a net benefit to the forest preserve in return for extinguishing our claim to title, the DEC is committed to adding property totaling more than 1,400 additional acres to the forest preserve. He goes on to name those properties and four others. Within that context, I would like to point out that the acting commissioner, now Commissioner Basil Sagos, has enhanced the overall public benefit, which is why I would recommend a yes vote on this measure. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Engelbright. In the affirmative. Mr. Butler, to explain his vote. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. You know, to say that many of us have been waiting a long time for this moment would be a profound understatement. This legislation uh, finally settles a property title dispute between the state and residents around Township 40, more specifically Racket Lake, that dates back more than a century. Uh, it finally resolves that issue, but Mr. Speaker, there is a more fundamental issue that was involved. Uh, this was initiated with a constitutional amendment that was passed two years ago uh, and as this has transpired uh, as part of the agreement uh, there were conditions on the agreement and the residents of Racket Lake paid into a fund to buy additional state property to add to the Adirondack Park. Uh, this was an agreement that was made. It's a long-standing agreement and as this legislation worked through its way through the process here over the last couple of days, there were some, some complications. But I have to commend many people for their efforts in finally bringing this to resolution for the people of Racket Lake. Uh, foremost among them is Steve Engelbright, the chairman of the NCON committee, Dan Steck, the ranker on that committee. But there are many other people that work behind the scenes, and I really want to acknowledge them. And first and foremost, uh, Carolyn Gurdon, I think she's up there. She has been here working. The people of Racket Lake owe you such a great debt for what you've done, Carolyn. You've been with us the whole time, and congratulations to you. Uh, there are many others as well, and I know the speaker uh, or the majority leader, Joe Morelli, became involved. Uh, this is an issue that transcended geographic boundaries and political boundaries. Uh, many members here have residents or have a constituent that own property on Racket Lake and got involved as well. Uh, there are some other people, uh, Neil Woodworth up there, thank you, Neil, uh, Willie Janeway, uh, Julie Tighe from the DEC, and Ken Ham, the lawyer from the DEC, who worked so very hard on this. And as I said, over the last week, uh, it was on, it was off, it was on, it was off, so this is a great moment for the people of Racket Lake, and a lot of people responsible for making this happen are sitting up there in the balcony tonight. So. Uh, with that thought, Mr. Speaker, I think I'm going to vote yes on this bill. Mr. Butler in the affirmative. Mr. Daniel Steck on the bill. Thank you, Mr. Explain Speaker. I rise to also explain my vote. I appreciate the opportunity. I, too, want to recognize the same people that uh, Mr. Butler did. Uh, and as a ranking member on the Environmental Conservation Committee, I want to especially call out the chairman, Steve Engelbright, uh, for working on this 100-year-old problem uh, that took the last 10 years off and on uh, to get through a constitutional amendment and then certainly getting over the finish line here today. 
So, Steve, thank you. Thank your staff. I know your staff has been burning the candle at both ends on this and other issues important in the Adirondacks this past week, and we certainly appreciate all that. So thank you to you, your staff, the majority leader for cooperating with us on this. You, you made a big difference in the park to a lot of people, and we appreciate it. And in that, I will withdraw my request and vote in the affirmative. Then you're stuck in the affirmative. Ms. Glick, to explain her vote. Uh, thank you. Uh, to explain my vote, Mr. Speaker, uh, Raquette Lake is a beautiful, beautiful place. Brown Track Pond is a um, state park that is along the side of it, and I spent many, many uh, fun times camping up there. It's a beautiful part of the country. I'm glad that we were able to have a resolution on behalf of the people who uh, live in that area, and I am uh, very happy uh, to vote in the affirmative. Ms. Glick in the affirmative. Are there any other votes? Announce the results. Ayes 110, noes 0. The bill is passed. <laughs> Mr. Morelli. Thank you, Ms. Speaker. I understand there's a bit of housekeeping we need to take care of. On a motion by Mr. Dinowitz, page 22, calendar number 29, bill number 409A, amendments are received and adopted. Yes, sir. I, I apologize if I gave everyone a, uh, a sense of what the future will look like too soon. Um, we have, uh, I'd like to take up the next two bills uh, in this order. Rules report 517 by Mr. Moya, which is on page 3 of the A calendar and follow it up with rules report 524 on page 5 of the A calendar by Ms. Richardson. Clerk will read. Senate 2251A, Rules Report 517, Senator Larkin, an act to amend the penal law. Read the last section. This act shall take effect immediately. Clerk will record the vote. Mr. Goodell, to explain his vote. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. To explain my vote, uh, under current law, a simple assault, which would be uh, you know, an assault that causes injury but not serious injury and with no intent to cause injury, is a Class A misdemeanor, which is punishable, by the way, to up, with up to a year in, in jail. So it's a, it's a serious, it can be a serious charge. Well, what this does is uh, brings a simple assault on a utility worker up to a Class D felony, which would be an indeterminate sentence of one to seven years. And that then puts it in the same category of someone who, with intent to injure, causes a serious injury with a weapon. And the problem is then if a simple assault is now treated on the same level as someone shooting or stabbing a utility worker, I'm afraid that this will make life a lot more dangerous for utility workers because if somebody's upset with a utility worker, it doesn't matter whether they uh, you know, punch them or whether they shoot them or stab them, the charge is the same. And historically, we've kept a higher level of criminal sanction, the more dangerous the uh, assault. And by consolidating a simple assault with a serious assault, we eliminate that graduation in uh, degree, and I think ultimately will be more dangerous for utility workers. I would point out one other thing. We first did this type of elevation of an, uh, of an offense for police officers, and then we extended it to firefighters, but we did it all the way through the penal code. And so there still is a graduation of offenses for police officers and firefighters, and it's more serious. Uh, we don't do that for utility workers, which makes it more dangerous for utility workers. For that reason, I'll be voting no. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Goodell in the negative.
Are there any other votes? Announce the results. Ayes 90, noes 23. The bill is passed. Senate 8104A, Rules Report 524, Senator Parker, an act to amend the penal law. Read the last section. This act shall take effect November 1st. Clerk will record the vote. Mr. Goodell to explain his vote. Thank you. Uh, you know, we're now carrying this process of elevating a tax uh, to those who clean bus stations and subway stations. Why don't we simply abolish a Class A misdemeanor for a simple assault and make it a, a serious felony? Because who amongst us wants to be assaulted by anybody? And why is it that the cleaner in a subway station should get a special attention, but not the cleaners in any other building? Or for that matter, any other person? And when you gradually put everybody one position at a time into a Class D felony, the unintended consequence is you eliminate the difference that we initially started out by intending to provide a higher level of protection for police and firemen, because with this bill, we tell our police and our firemen that their life and safety is at the same level as a station cleaner or a terminal cleaner. Love those guys. Wish more of them were up here. God knows we need to clean up Albany, but I still don't think we need to, want, need to nor should raise it to a Class D felony. Thank you. Mr. O'Donnell, to explain his vote. Will wonders never cease? I agree with Mr. Goodell. <laughs> Happens. Mr. Levine, to explain his vote. So the, the argument seems to be, and it's an argument, an intellectual argument made in, made in good faith that what we're doing by um, making this punishment more severe is perhaps actually putting sanitation workers or utility workers in danger because after all, if a criminal is going to assault them, why not make it a real, a real assault, a real serious assault because they're going to face a felony? And I, I would only say that with the hundreds if not thousands of people I represented charged with crimes, not one of them had the vaguest sense of what a felony was or a misdemeanor was. They didn't know the difference between an E or a D felony or an A misdemeanor. This shows the sense of this body uh, to the extent that we want those who represent in one way or another um, uh, the state or uh, all of us to have this, this special protection. I think that's what this is all about. And I'm happy that we're doing this and pleased we're doing this for utility workers and for those who um, uh, uh, are uh, injured uh, cleaning up uh, subway stations or uh, terminals in the state of New York. I think it's as simple as that. I vote in the affirmative. Mr. Levine, in the affirmative.
went over 76. It went up and down.